Piper's videos back in the barn and um, I think the last time I did a video in July I was explaining that I was struggling with a herniated disc in my neck and hoping for surgery. Well, a month ago uh, in August I had surgery so now I'm the owner of a kind of a cool artificial disc. But uh, so I've still got some neck pain and I've got a ways to go with PT but um, I wanted to get out here and test out and show you guys parts one and two of this air javelin from Umarex um, because frankly uh, the CO2 portion of it we're running out of summer so I had to kind of get something going here but I'm not quite ready for shooting just yet but I'm gonna give it my best shot basically the really cool thing are these interesting mods you guys probably can look at a lot of different videos and see all about the specs and uh, what this air javelin with CO2 was meant to be, but I had been very interested in trying to convert it to compressed air HPA. Finally got around to doing it while I've been kind of rehabbing my neck for the last uh, few weeks. Uh, I put something together, but I have no idea if it's actually going to work. I've not tested it, but uh, a lot of people were saying they wanted some uh, crony info on these. Um, so I'm just going to do part one here. Um, I've already filmed it. The CO2 is actually spent, but uh, I'll put the video in here in a second. And then we'll uh, get into the mods over here. Some interesting things. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to be really lame. I'm still on some fairly interesting doses of uh, anti-inflammatory corticosteroids, oral, and some pain nerve blockers, so I'm, I'm not real swift in the thinking. Not that I ever am, but it's even worse when you're taking meds. So please forgive any, like, lameness in my, my talking, because I'm just uh, trying to struggle to get this out. But I'm real excited about it because I've done some mods to it, as you can see. you got different scope on it. And I've, I've been playing around with some mods, so we'll get to that. But why don't I just show you the... Uh, just some real quick video of uh, shooting it with the CO2. I got some shots at the target. I was doing it uh, with a bipod on it. Then at the end I did it freehand. And then I've got some information here on some monograph tests. So we'll watch that and then we'll get back to these cool mods. I'll have them all out on the table and we'll talk about them. And then we'll try shooting some HPA and see how it goes. Okay, I was just doing a little bit of a uh, little CO2 testing here. Um, uh, first one was a lube test shot, then 333 air, air 303. It's kind of a weird, my CO2 cartridge I'll show you is really old. Uh, 300 and then 299. Basically what I've got here. This is, if I can open it up there is a 17 year old cartridge. I, so I don't know how good the CO2, there was some kind of a weird clanking sound, but it's working. It's, but as you could see, the gun is really accurate. Okay, so I have fired the gun a total of 12 times. I can't remember exactly how many shots you're supposed to get, but I'm gonna stop with the uh, chronograph testing because I'm down to 292. So obviously the errors in the crony, I still have to count as shots for the CO2 loss, but um, I'm just going to play around with some accuracy now and see how she's set up. But uh, finish off the CO2 and then we'll go to the high pressure air. Well, they're all bullseye. Well, that one ain't quite a bullseye, but bullseye, bullseye, bullseye. 
That's not too bad. And I think the CO2 is kicking down a bit, so you can see they're not going in as far. So. I decided to just try a few for offhand. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm just, I just had surgery on my herniated disc and they put in an artificial cervical disc in my neck. And so I wasn't quite sure how well I'd be able to hold it. So this is uh, offhand. As a matter of fact, I'll even try a couple more offhand. I'm, I'm kind of happy with how that turned out. Um, I'm kind of shaky, I'm not real steady. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't think that was too bad for offhand. 30 feet ain't any great distance, but like I said, I mean, I'm not, I'm in horrible shape right now. So give it a try here offhand again. But yeah, I guess these are uh, not too bad for the condition I'm in, so I can't complain too much. I'll do better once I get myself, my neck back into good shape. But So yeah. Okay, so that will end the CO2 portion. Okay, so part one, sorry it was kind of just all chopped together, but um, this really is, this video uh, today is more about, I guess, my second look, which is the mods that you see before you hear that I'm going to play with. Um, basically, a lot of people were saying they wanted to try to convert it to high pressure air, and everybody asked about it. I was one of them, and I just thought, I, until they actually have something available, I just used what I had at my disposal, and then there's some other mods I've done, like... Uh, higher cheek rust, um, a bipod, some other things. But anyway, I'll get right into it. This is your standard CO2, which I think I had shared that these are like 17 years old. And it, but um, let's just kind of look first at just the fun mods. Okay, one of the things I noticed is that this a terrible cheek weld, I just couldn't get my cheek up um, high enough to, to where I was comfortable with, with the gulp. So in any case, I had this old Cordura, I think it's a Blackhawk. I'll put a link at the bottom of the description in the video to all the stuff with the exception of this old uh, braided cape I had from the paintball days. But the quiver, the bipod, uh, the tank, all these. Anyway, so I had this really old stock, I actually Cordura, and then I just rubber coated it with uh, Plasti Dip. You know, it's, it's kind of got a real nice, cheek weld and it's the right height for me and everything. So that's the first thing I did. Then by chance, <laughs> I just was digging around in my little tote of stuff. I had this Mickey Mouse little um, plastic, or I guess they call it a Zytel bipod that I just was looking at. I said, hey, I wonder if that would pinch on the bottom. And if I put this back together. If you look, this little it pinches right on that rail like that, and there you go. It's a little bit tall, but it but it does work. So it's it just kind of a cool thing if a person wanted to, to rest it on, the, on a table like I've got it, but just kind of a cool option. And then um, everybody's talking about quivers. Well, the first thing I bought after some extra arrows was this little nylon. Like, then I, when I was at uh, local fleet farm, they had this thing in the back, and I'll show you a picture here. Okay, so you saw the pictures of the M-lock screws, and then this is the little quick disconnect that this comes with. So I've got that put on there with some M-lock screws I got off eBay. And then this little gizmo just kind of slides in there. It's locked, and you can screw it tight, and there you go. So then you got yourself a quiver. I know there's like a True Glow one as well. I think this one cost me... 29 bucks, so I, I don't know if that's a good deal or bad deal. I, 
So yeah, that's the quiver I decided to go with. Now down to the HPA. It's all, but I just tried to think of ways I could convert it. And just by chance, I haven't played paintball. There's a barrel blocker. I haven't played paintball probably in the better part of 10 years, but it, I was a you know member for at least well over 20 years. And so I had a lot of this old gear around. And uh, first and foremost, what I did was I got a 13 CI cubic inch uh, 3000 PSI tank off Amazon. And I understand that it has a regulator on it to 800 PSI, which I think is the supposedly the CO2 range. But um, this just seemed to be the thing I would use. Uh, then what I did also on Amazon was I got this fitting here. Again, at the bottom, it's, uh, you'll see where you can get it. Uh, I think it was like 15 bucks or something, 14. You got your ASA fitting that would go into there. And then this makes up for the bottle where the bottle would plug into. In there. And this is an old, <laughs> I guess you called this a remote. When we had the coiled remotes, if we had a 20 ounce of CO2 on you, um, you'd have a coiled remote going up to your gun if you didn't want to have a tank hanging down. You had your on and off for the the bottle, then you had your slide on and off. This was an extension. I think it's eight inches, an eight inch extension, maybe ten, I don't know. I just happen to have it. Anyway, I'm digging through there and thinking, hey, why couldn't I try to mod something, you know, once I get the fitting that replicates the 88 or 90 gram CO2 cartridge and then just go off of that. So as you can see then, what it is, is it's basically a quick disconnect setup. Just it, This would have been supposedly on the back of the gun. This probably came out of my Tipman A5 or else my PEC Master paintball gun. And then this is of course the adapter that I got from Amazon to replicate the 88 and 90 gram CO2. I'm not sure quite how it's gonna or not gonna work, but uh, okay, so you got that on there. Just a quick disconnect. Okay, now it seems to be on, seems to be on tight. Okay, we got our tank, and this rubber thing I did was, I had to try to find a way to keep this on here, I wasn't really sure how I was going to approach this, so what I do, I um, end up bending this around, this rests somewhere kind of like right in here, and the rubber gives it kind of a nice grippage, and uh, then I use this keeper strap for now. It's it's a lame thing, but it, it works. So until I come up with something better, it's, it's how it's going to be. Get the cap off. Maybe I'll cock it. So again, you guys are here with me for the first time really doing this. So, so if I pull that forward, there we go. She gassed up. So far, so good. Keeper strap. I'm sure I'll come up with something better later on, but for right now this seems to be working, so I'll just do it. And I try to get it so I keep it. I'll show you in a second. So it's off of the uh, cover. It's you know it, it works. It keeps it tight. You know. So hopefully I can come. Maybe you guys will have some better ideas. You can put something in the comments. But so by rights, that means now that I've cocked it, make sure I can work the safety. Yeah, I can still work the safety. So if I pull this trigger, it should work, right? Should we give it a try? Whoa! Okay, that wasn't good. Well, okay, well. I wonder if I need to shoot an arrow out of it. I wonder if it's just like no back pressure. Okay. Arrow's in. I already cocked it. Okay, well, whatever. Again, I'm not sure that anybody's got this all figured out yet, but uh, okay, so for all intents and purposes, it's holding air, it worked. All right, so maybe I'll get the crony set up and see what kind of feet per second and so on. So let's give that a try here. 
Okay, so for now, I have my bipod kind of set up, my crony. I'll see what kind of feet per second we're getting. I shouldn't say pressure. I guess pressure. Hopefully, we're getting 800 PSI. Did I already cock it? I did not cock it. Okay, so it was holding there after that. Safety. Okay, let's see if I can get this across the screen straight here. Let's try. Two twenty. So let me try one more. Not sure if the regulator is set to eight hundred psi. I'm not sure if the gun is really to operate with HPA. I've heard people complaining about these HK Army uh, three thousand psi cylinders, saying that they're not as powerful as as they claim they are. They're they're thinking they're between seven and seven fifty psi. I have no way to test it other than just checking my crony. So two sixteen. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that if the gun, if this air bowl can actually function with high pressure air, then there's a really good chance that the regulator just isn't up as high as it could be, or as, as it should be, I guess you'd want to say. Yeah, I should be putting the safety on and off, sorry about that bad, bad boy. Because where I had this dead on before, now she's shooting low about, you come look, you, you remember seeing the CO2, I'm using the same exact scope setup, I, and I'm pretty much centered. Well, except for that lame shot, but you know, we're talking, oh, it's maybe only an inch and a half. I guess an inch. Okay, it's a little low, but whatever. It's about 100 feet per second slower than the, than the CO2. So I think I'll give it one more try here. Put safety on. Here we go. But yeah, it looks like it's probably about 100 feet. Per I, I don't know PSI wise. Is that okay? So if if that 88 or 90 gram CO2 at 75 degrees is, I don't know, what do you think? 850 PSI, 825? I guess I don't even know. Maybe it's 900 for all I know. And this is set up at 800 or less. That would be where my loss would be. Now, is that 100 feet per second? I have no idea. You guys would probably know more than me. I have no idea about... 218. So what were the other numbers? They were, uh, oh gosh, I'll have to look at the video, but it was like, so we're on 2, 3, 4, 218. Oh, I think the first one was like 220, wasn't it? So something like that. But anyway, so I, yeah, as you can see, I mean, we're at 333, 303, through the CO2, 299, 302, 292, and here we are in the 200, so it's, it's about 100 feet per second slower. There's no reason to keep, you know, checking. I'm burning up my lights because it's, it's what it is. But obviously then, yeah, if I switch to air in the winter time, I'll just have to adjust the scope because obviously it's shooting low. So it does work. It's, it's, got, some, it's got some tweaking to go. We've got to do some tweaking. But at least you know that it, it, it functions. So as I was saying, okay, here's our core. Here's our Tighten that up. There's the bottle that's on there. You can use the bipod if you choose to still. It works. There's still enough area to grab onto. So I, so I also do have a True Glow uh, two and a half MOA dot with a two power scope. It's really actually really kind of nice. It's got, but got a cute little quiver here. It kind of works. You lift it up like you're supposed to. And uh, so anyway, there's the setup. There's the better cheek, cheek weld for getting your you know, eye a little higher for the scope. And uh, I'm just trying to use as low a scope as I can because these do typically mine shot low right out of the gate. Anyway, there's some mods. If you're interested, you can look down below in the description. I'll put a listing to as much as I can. Like I said, the braided line and the fittings, that's stuff I've had for over 20 years off of a remote line um, extension kit and... I wouldn't even have a clue where you'd get those nowadays. So, but at least the quiver, the scope, the the bottle, uh, the fitting to to replicate the 88 to 90 gram 
CO2, um, and then you guys can try yourself and see what you come up with. But as you can see, it turns out that it's, at least with that particular bottle and regulator, it's uh, just about 90 to 80 per second slower. But that's still no wimpy. I mean, I still wouldn't want to get shot with that arrow. I mean, take a look. I mean, so this is a pretty much of a brand new bag I got. Uh, and that 450, I guess, is what it's rated for for uh, arrows feet per second. So it's no slouch. I mean, at 200 some feet per second, I still wouldn't want to be shot. So with an arrow. Anyway, so that's what I got for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Again, sorry for me being lame, but I'm just recovering from that uh, artificial disc replacement in my neck. And hopefully my next video I'll be a little bit more coherent and able to get some better information out. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. See ya.